Hi, I'm Donna Davis here with Paola Nunez from Fleming Flooring and Design and welcome to the show, Paola. Well, thank you so much for having me. So we've got a lot to talk about today. You're going to tell us all about how to clean various types of flooring as well as some of the differences in um, the, the different fibers, right? With carpet, that kind of thing. Yes, and each it's very important also to address the different fibers since that's the way we know exactly how to go about cleaning them as well, so very important. Right, and then you've got some examples to show us, so it's gonna be a really good show today. We're also going to talk to homeowners about a few things that they can do to prepare for installation of carpet. And first of all, Paola, tell us a little bit about what you do at Fleming. Yes, so um, with me and my other uh, colleagues that work there, in this case, uh, Whitney, Tiffany, uh, Pamela, uh, what we do is um, mostly from apart from selling, we're there to inform customers, educate them on what's the appropriate type of flooring to go to. Let's say, for example, they're trying to find something for a leak or it's going in bedrooms because they have a newborn coming on the way, we make sure to uh, direct them to the most appropriate flooring and also at the same time go according to their needs. So maybe they want to feel something comfy on their feet. So we'll direct them more to maybe going with the carpet option or maybe they want to find something that's more of a wood look but they don't want to maybe spend so much, so we lead them maybe to a vinyl. So those are uh, kind of what we do mostly in the showroom. Yeah, and one thing that I really like about Fleming, and I just recently have been a customer of Fleming, is all of the help in the showroom, and, and we'll talk a little bit about this later, but you were so helpful when my husband and I came in the showroom looking to match a carpet, but we'll go into a little bit of that later. First of all, tell us about the different types of carpet fibers and the advantages and disadvantages and show us some of the samples you brought. Okay, so yes, so there are different types of carpet fibers. The first one is the polyester. That one is a very common one that many people know. That one, the positives of that is that it's a great option if you're trying to sell your home or it's for a rental property because of the attributes it has where it's, um, it's easy to clean but as well with time, it, that's kind of a negative of it where it tends to show more uh, wear marks, it gets more matted down. So that's why it's a good option if you're trying to sell or for a rental property because uh, customers that are interested in those aspects can just remove it um, or even so keep it for a little bit amount of time. So those are the aspects of the polyester. I actually have a sample that we sell a lot right now because we have it in stock at Fleming. This one is called, it's from Mohawk SP960, the color linen. This is an example of a polyester. So it's a good, um, it's a very popular look. And um, the feel of it is, um, the fiber is a little bit more of a loose fiber. So this is an example of a polyester. There's also, for example, a, a nylon. That one is a little bit of a step up. It's gonna get a little bit more in price, which is where it gets, I guess, of a disadvantage. But the plus is that the quality goes up and that it's great for high traffic areas. And even so with the new new nylons that they're making right now, especially for example, like the uh, Shaw nylons, they have a, a sort of um, what they call the Anso nylon or the R2X in there. So it makes it good not only for high traffic, but also for uh, cleanability as well. And most of the nylons now are made that way. So it has in a way, um, the number one, the high trafficness, but it's also great for cleaning as well with more nylons. Then we have, for example, the Triaxta. And this is actually something made from Mohawk. It's also called the Smart Strand. This for me is actually one of my favorite one because it's kind of a fiber that has everything. It's great for cleaning, it's great for high trafficness, it's great if you have allergies for pets. And the positive of this fiber in comparison to the other previously two mentioned is that the staining sort of sits on top and won't sink into the carpet. So I wanted to show you as well um, different types of ways it, of, of staining where this is applied. Um, that's found in this brochure that we make sure to give customers when they walk in. 
So these are examples of staining that shows that aspect of the smart strand. For example, right here, there's if you have maybe a tomato drink or for example, red wine, especially now in the holidays where this would be a good option to, to consider buying just because it, it has those great attributes to it. So those are the uh, positives of the smart strand. There's also then the wool carpet, which is one of the more expensive ones, but it's more of a natural fiber. So it's something that would also be great to consider. And finally, there's also polypropylene, which is more of like an indoor outdoor type of fiber, which is great if, for example, you wanna have a carpet outside on your porch. Uh, those would be the, the uh, positives of the um, of the polypropylene because you could put it outside, for example. And, and there are many designs uh, nowadays that make it seem very elegant outside, even though it's a carpet that goes for the outside aspect. So those would be options of the different carpet fibers. Now you brought in some cleaners, right? Did you want to yes. go over with the cleaners, like what you should use on which type of fabric? Sure. Uh, so we recommend a lot uh, going with this type of carpet cleaner. This is the R2X. It's a new new label now. Um, so, but it's the same type of uh, spray that is used that we recommend. Um, as mentioned before, it's from Shaw, and this would be a great type of carpet cleaner to go with, if um, especially too if you're going with a Shaw product, a Shaw polyester, a Shaw, a Shaw nylon. This would be great to go with um, because it, it makes it so you're able to remove those stains. And um, this would be one that you could use, honestly, for any carpet, but we always recommend to go on their websites of, of, of wherever you buy the carpet because they'll have like a list of carpet cares and what would be the most recommendable type of um, way to go about in cleaning it. Um, but for sure, if you have a shop product, this would be something that we would recommend as a carpet cleaning spray. So recently, we got new carpeting, and, and of course, you had helped us with that. And our dogs got their nails cut, and then one of them um, bled one of the, you know, one of the mm. nails after she got her paws trimmed, her little claws trimmed. It got blood on the carpet, and we weren't sure how to clean that. Any recommendation on that in particular? Yeah. Uh, so one of the first things uh, that I would recommend, and as well uh, my colleagues at work, would be to one of the first things would be to go on the website of wherever the carpet was made. Like, for example, if it was a Maslin carpet, going on their website and see what would they recommend for their type of carpet, because even though it could be the same fiber, each company kind of has their own aspect going about that. So it would be good to see, first of all, what they would recommend. Also, what we generally would recommend would be, let's say the, uh, in this case, the that stain was fresh. The first thing would be to kind of maybe getting like a cloth and kind of maybe trying to remove the top of it. If you, if still like it seems like it's not working out, the next thing would be to kind of damp the cloth and putting it on top. That way all the, the staining get kind of goes up to the top. And also um, when you put the damp cloth on there, putting like some like, like a, like a jug on top. So that way that everything like that weight makes all the liquid or the stain come up and see if that helps to remove it. And, and in these processes, don't, don't scrub it. Just because the fibers are so uh, sensitive, they might break, So and we don't want that. We want to continue to have a great carpet. So that would be the way to go about it. Don't scrub, do that. Um, if any of that does not work, try doing a carpet cleaner, like for example, going with the Shaw that um, was just previously shown, or whatever, in this case, um, if it's a different company, maybe what they would recommend as a carpet spray. And if, if all those options um, unfortunately don't work, then we would recommend going with a professional carpet company, uh, a cleaning company that could remove those stains. Yeah, well, thank you. She managed to walk all over the carpet, I think, so there were lots of stains, but I did see on everything that I looked at that it said, yeah, don't scrub it, just blot. Yeah, so mm -hmm. good advice. Um, so do you have some different examples? I know we talked about the different, you know, um, fabric that actually makes up the carpet. Do you have some different examples of styles of carpet? Did you bring in that? Yes, uh, so um, that, that that's something as well that I, I wanted to point out too. Um, 
especially when customers come in, they tend to confuse what is the fiber and maybe like the style. Um, so that's what um, I wanted to show today. Um, since we already know what the fibers are, these are the different styles or looks of carpet you can go with. For example, as the one that I showed previously, this was a polyester, but that's the fiber. And then this though is showing you the, a style of carpet, which is known as a cut pile. So this is uh, more of a looser type of yarn in the carpet. Um, it's a little bit more, a little bit on the tighter side, but not so tight in comparison to another style, which would be a plush carpet, which is a more tighter type of carpet weave. And um, going even more in detail with the style, this would be considered a tonal. So it has not just one color, but two colors, but with um, both colors kind of like in a lighter tone on there. So this would be an example of one. Um, there's also, I also brought right here a, um, a cut loop, which would be another type of uh, carpet look or style. This one is a cut loop because the cut part being uh, referencing to the cut pile, which is the softer part that you see right here that my finger is uh, touching upon. And then you have the loop, which is kind of like the little square that makes it for a pattern sort of look. So this would be a, a good option if, for example, um, you're trying to uh, have more of an elegant type of look and or maybe you don't want to go with the regular type of cut pile or a plush and want something different, this would be something that would be a good option. There's also, um, I brought from this company Tough Text that we do a lot for especially uh, stair runners. This one uh, is from Shaw Tough Text. The style is called Tracery, and this would be an example of another type of carpet style, which would be referred to as the loop. Or in this case, this is what people refer to now as, um, or remember the Berber that used to be very popular. Uh, they've now made it where it's not just like with that tough texture that a Berber usually had, but this is more of a softer loop. Um, so this would be an example, um, kind of like referring to like if you want a pattern. So this would be one that has different colors you can go about with. This is a popular type of look as well and the texture of it is all loop. You don't find any of the soft pile. It's, that's, that's why it's referred to as uh, the loop. Um, and then uh, there's also the, for example, the frise or the shag, which is more of like, uh, it might seem kind of weird, but like I kind of remember like kind of like with like a wormy type of thing because the yarn is kind of like all like loose. Um, nowadays, for example, like the shag, it's a little bit more of a chunky type of loose type of yarn, um, but th that would be another type of uh, another type of carpet style to go with. And I didn't bring a sample of that today, but um, just going more in detail with the different styles, there's also the what we call a fleck or a multicolor type of thing, which is different from the. A tonal look because you see more various colors in there. Like for example, you might have like blacks and whites and uh, blues maybe mixed in together, or maybe a, some of the samples that we have um, in our showroom kind of have like a green in there with other colors. So that would be another type of look or style that we would also, um, that there is and that we would show as well. Yeah, and I want to remind, that's so, it's so interesting, but I do want to remind people that they can um, come to the showroom and see all the different things. We can look at some of the video of the showroom. Uh, there's all kinds of products that, that you can touch and feel, and you can even take home some examples and look at them in the light in your own home, and that's super helpful. But also, if you don't want to go to the showroom yet, you can start your experience online and start shopping where you can see the pictures and the different colors, and there's so much to choose from. So you can get a great education right there on the website, but when you come into the showroom, you will love the chance to be able to touch and feel all these examples. And this has been great and very helpful. So tell us about um, a type of carpet that doesn't show vacuum marks. Okay, so that's actually a common question that many people come in and ask. And honestly, I really thought that there was none, but with con kind of like with ex the experience of uh, working with customers and seeing and getting the knowledge of different carpet looks and fibers, 
I've come to say that there is such a thing, um, and I say this a little bit like not like 100%, but in the option that there that there is, which would be in this case a going with a, a tight loop, but make sure that that loop is not soft because, and make sure as well that it's kind of um, a loop that's kind of more on the short end, not as high, because the higher you go in a carpet generally, and even if it's a tight loop, and the softness it also has, the more that you will see vacuum marks. So in this case, if that is a concern, we would show in the showroom a carpet that's a low, um, not as soft type of loop. Yeah, so that's very helpful. Tell us about the advantages and disadvantages of one type of flooring over another. Yeah, okay. So um, for example, um, especially going with the hard surface aspect, Let's say, for example, you are um, wanting to maybe have it um, in, in an area where there's lots of moisture, um, or maybe you're trying to put it in a kitchen or a bathroom where you'll find more of like, let's say in the kitchen there's a spill, or especially in the bathroom with the humidity. Um, for example, in this case, we would recommend going with the vinyl rather than going with the carpet or a hardwood. With the carpet, that wouldn't be a good option since um, it would kind of, you know, feel like the, the, the wetness of the carpet and then maybe it could cause like mildew depending on the fiber you go with. And with the hardwood, that wouldn't be a good option as well uh, because um, with water tends to uh, make the, the wood get like, um, I don't recall the right terminology for it, but I, I know it ends up messing up the wood. Um, taking away like the good quality that it has. So in that situation, we would recommend going with the vinyl, especially if you're trying to go with something that's more of like not so expensive as a wood, but not as cheap as a, maybe with some of the carpets. That would be something that we would show people. Um, now, for example, going with with a um, with a carpet. Um, that would be something that would be a good option if you're maybe trying to have something more softer on your feet, if you're trying to uh, have something that's a little bit more cost effective. Of course, depending on which uh, type of fiber and uh, style you go with, the price goes up. But generally speaking, carpet would be something if you're trying to um, not spend so much. And, um, and also maybe going maybe with a tile would be a good option if you're trying to have something more of, more durable, like for example, going with the porcelain tile. So that would be kind of like how we would grab, uh, we would show people one, one, um, one flooring over another, another, depending on the necessity that we see of the customer. Yeah. So what types of flooring have stood the test of time, have been classic and people just keep coming back to them year after year? Yeah. So for that, um, something that we've seen a lot that, for example, going with the carpet aspect would be going with just a regular cup pile or the plush. Um, going with, for example, the vinyl and the hardwood, something that's been a common thing that always stays is kind of people going for like that, that two and a quarter or three or five, five inch width of going with like a gun stock. Um, for example, we sell like lots of Bruce I think the style is called Springdale. That one is like giving you like that more gun stock type of look. Um, there's also, for example, and I, and I brought samples of that as well, of the type of uh, color and look. This one is actually from Mannington. And so we see a lot that lots of people are, are always going with maybe this type of width with the color and the knot. Uh, also, for example, this is also a Mannington product. This is um, going, lots of people are, are still sticking with an oak and seeing like that rusticness and maintaining like that honey, natural reddish color. And in the aspect of, for example, of tile, we see that mar the marble looks are still pretty good. And also um, the porcelain. Porcelain has always been like a popular thing because of its durability, because of, excuse me, of the, um, the resistance it has for freezing temperatures. So um, that would be uh, something that kind of we would say is more of like a classic type of looks that have continued in all aspects of, of the flooring. Yeah, that's so helpful. And what kind of things are you seeing that are maybe new that customers are gravitating to now? Yeah, so um, what we've seen now is kind of like referencing to the classic look 
is that more people are actually going for like that classic look, classic look, I'm sorry, more now. Um, I remember that when I first started working, um, I noticed that lots of people were going more towards like the, those dark grays, the wider the plank, the better sort, sort of thing. But now um, what we've been seeing more is that people are kind of sticking more towards, I guess like, and so to speak, it's not, I guess maybe a new type of thing, kind of since it's going back to the classic type of things, but um, new and popular in the essence that people are going more to that now. Also, for example, they're trying to go more for, um, let's say like these samples right here. This is from the company, company Farmstead. Lots of people are kind of kind of going with that color of not so much gray, but yet they don't want to leave it behind, so to speak, where they're trying to kind of um, going more towards a lighter gray is a popular thing going on right now. And also what's popular is kind of going back to the sample right here. They're going a lot to uh, luxury vinyl planks, which is what I'm holding right here as something that's been um, very popular now, the vinyls, the luxury vinyl tile or plank. Also in, compare, in, um, in referencing the colors, lots of people are going towards that middle ground where they're going more of like a brown gray, like this sample right here, um, where they're, like I, like I mentioned before, they're not trying to totally forget gray, but they don't want to go back to um, those earth tones of brown. So they're trying to kind of find like a middle ground of going with browns and grays. That's been pretty popular too. Also, um, kind of referencing as well the Tough Tech sample, there's a really popular one that I've seen. Um, it's also from the Tough Tech's company. It's not the sample right here, but it's actually called from Tough Tech's Stroll, which in a way reflects this type of look because uh, people are going more towards those that loop pattern, but with a color in there. So that's kind of what we've been seeing is very popular nowadays, um, more of the neutrals, um, more of going back towards the the classic look and going more towards that middle ground of a mixture of grays and uh, of browns. Yeah, and for anyone who hasn't come in and actually seen the luxury vinyl, you just have to. It's amazing. It's not at all yes. what you think of when you think of vinyl flooring. It is really right. beautiful. And those examples are also. So tell us a little bit about how Fleming caters to the Spanish-speaking community. Yes, so um, we've had lots of Spanish speakers come in and um, well, I my heritage, I'm Mexican-American, so uh, especially when a customer comes in, um, I tend to come and help those uh, Spanish-speaking customers. As well in the back, um, in our warehouse, we have as well a gentleman called, his name is Jesus or Alex, where in the warehouse aspect, he helps the Spanish-speaking uh, clients as well. So um, we tend to give them like, the, like a very good um, customer service, make them feel comfortable. And um, in this way, as, as in this case, I would show people um, what it is in um, speaking in English, we would give that same type of quality and customer service even to our, our Spanish speakers. And it's really lovely to see when they come in and they kind of like, they tend to be a little bit more since they're many times they're not familiar with the language, they tend to kind of shy off. But once they see somebody speaking, they tend to open up. So it's really good to see um, that that's a good way of bringing people in and making them feel like, um, even though um, uh, they're in, they're in a comp uh, in a place where maybe uh, Spanish is not uh, sp spoken as much, we'll be happy to help them feel comfortable and make sure that their their needs will be met, even though they don't speak as much English. So we 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 cater them really really well. Yeah, and you guys have great customer service. So recently, we came into the showroom, my husband and I, and and you were able to help us so much with selecting the right carpet and sending us home with examples. And I do want to mention that, you know, when you have that carpet installation, I want you to tell us like what people can expect. But if somebody is Spanish speaking, you guys can arrange to have Spanish speaking installers come out too, right? Yes. And actually the majority of our installers actually speak Spanish. And, um, and also for example, like my father um, is one of the installers that would come out. Um, or my uncle as well. So um, that would be also a good um, an, a good positive for maybe customers that only speak Spanish because they'll be able to get 
an installer that for sure um, speaks Spanish as well. Yeah, so tell us what the homeowners can expect during the installation process or how they should prepare for that installation process. Yeah, so gen generally, um, the when we assign um, in the showroom for somebody to come out, which would be the one that goes and estimates, that would be the project manager. They would be the ones that would kind of explain more the process, uh, especially for example, if if in the home there's like a grand piano to move, to move or a pool table, um, I think generally they'll, that might be maybe an additional charge that wouldn't be something that um, we, that the installer might move. But that would be questions that for sure, um, with the knowledge they have, their project managers would be happy to share. But for sure, um, for um, after that process um, has done and there's still some questions that need to be answered, we would say that to prepare and what to expect would be if, if customers have any like fragile items or anything of personal importance that needs to be, that's in the area, we would say to kind of put it to in, in, a, in a special spot. Um, because sometimes what, you know, we wouldn't want, you know, to, if it's something that's fragile of importance to, to, you know, touch it, the installers would not want to do that. So we would always say like, yes, if you have anything fragile, important, make sure to ahead of time, put it in a specific spot. Um, and then um, usually, for example, if it's a carpet installation and depending on how much needs to be done, it usually just takes a day. So um, you don't have to, you know, rent a hotel or anything like that. Um, you basically can just take the day off, the day of like maybe just going somewhere while, while the installers are doing their work in your home. Um, in some cases, since um, I've had the experience of of being with my father in some of the sites, um, usually like if it's a big enough house as well and there's space, the customers can actually stay in a specific spot, um, and and they don't have to actually be out of the house if 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 that's not an option. So, um, for example, in one occasion, uh, the only thing that needed to be done was the upstairs. So the customers just made sure to go to the basement downstairs where they had their TV or, or, or something. So um, they could just, you know, still stay in the house. Um, with vinyl, if, if, if luxury vinyl tile or plank needs to be installed, it's generally the same idea. Where it tends to be maybe where you might have to be out of the house would be if you're doing like a site sand and finish where it's like a seven day I believe process where for sure you cannot be in the house so it's good to prepare ahead of time a place to go since you won't be able to be in the house for that long. So and depending on the flooring you go with it tends to be a different process um, but that would be generally what would be um, what, what the in this case the customer can expect and how to prepare. Yeah, I would say just from a customer standpoint, and we recently had uh, three rooms done as well as our stairs, and I was shocked that the installers could get in, move everything, and get everything done in a day. And they were amazing. I mean, they work so hard and there's so much to do. I would only add to that that if you are going to be in the house and a lot of people are working from home right now, it's, a, it, it's just smart to know this is going to be loud. So you do mm -hmm. need to make accommodations for that. Also, mm -hmm. if you have small children or pets like we do, I had the, our pets put away upstairs in a different room, but it's, it's stressful for them. You know, there's a lot of noise going on. There's, there's hammering and all of that kind of thing. So I think it's a good idea if, if you as a homeowner, at least it was for me, to do as much of this as possible. There's so many little trinkets in your house that you can put away. And like you said, anything fragile, you can also, you know, just take the drawers out of, you know, really heavy things and that kind of thing and put them away yourself. My idea was that I wanted the installers, although they were fantastic, I wanted them in and out in as little time as possible. And so to have those things put away first so that they can get in, they can move the big things. And I will say this too, they took pictures of where everything was so they were able to put it all back. And they did an amazing job. But I would say as a homeowner, you know, that you wanna put those things that are, um, you know, the drawers out of things, just get them put away the, the things that are inside, maybe your cabinets, your little trinkets, you wanna have all that put away and the things that just sit on top of coffee tables and countertops or anything where they're going to be installing. And so, 
you know, th it was great for the dogs that they were just in and out. Also, I would just strongly advise anybody to put your pets, you know, yes. out away from the installers. A, you don't want them underfoot, but B, they, you know, they have to go inside and outside a lot. So you don't want like a, an inside dog or cat getting out right. and adding right. to that. So I think it's better for the stress of everyone if you yeah. do want to go ahead and do those things. But certainly know that the installers that Fleming has are great, very careful with your things. And as you can see in the video, they clean up everything and put things back as it was. So, and they are, you know, bilingual. So they were great. I think they would be great for anybody Spanish speaking as well as English speaking. But I couldn't say enough good things about the professionalism of the team that came out to our house. So, um, Paula, is there anything else that you wanted to say or add to this? Um, well, uh, I can say that um, we invite any customers and any as well, like any speaking speaking Spanish customers, because in our showroom, especially in our company, we'll, we will make sure to provide the best customer service and, and not go about, you know, uh, not getting the idea of, you know, that's not what we stand for of, of trying to sell, sell, sell um kind of the thing but it's more of a place where we're going to make sure to inform and educate uh, make sure you go with the right type of flooring for whatever it is let it be maybe a commercial setting or in this case today that was emphasized more the residential setting we would make sure to um, guide you guys in the right uh, type of flooring to go with and make sure you know we're always honest and um, make sure that everything of your needs is met when you come to Fleming Flooring and Design. Yeah, well, I can say as a customer, I certainly got all of that. Thanks so much for being here today. And we are here with a representative from Fleming Flooring on the first Thursday of the month, usually. This time we're on the second Thursday at 11 o'clock and here to answer all of your flooring questions. So happy holidays. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.